All right, so finally, I want to just talk about the Republican agenda. Because, you know, speaking of mobilization for the midterms, it'll probably get Republicans to turn out. But will it get independents and moderates? Based on this platform, I don't know. You know, we all think that the Republicans will dominate in the midterms, and it's looking more and more likely that that will be true. But the next question is, can they get anything done once they win? Because we all know about what happened when Obama got sweeped in the midterms. And, you know, we, we had the big rise of the Tea Party, blah, blah, blah. But they really actually didn't get anything done during that period after the midterms. And it was because I think they were too bold and empowered to, to act like idiots. And the reason why I, I want to go through Rick Scott's platform for the future of the United States is because it's causing a clash inside of his own party with people like Mitch McConnell. But it's also very fitting if you're part of the MAGA movement. And so I'm not saying it's not going to work, because I don't know. I think it's just still too early. But I also wonder, I, I truly wonder, if it might actually mean that this party has no means for governing. So let me pull this up real quick, because Rick Scott... Florida senator, definitely more on the Trumpy side. Let's just go through it. I have the paper up. It's called An 11-Point Plan to Rescue America. What Americans Must Do to Save the Country by U.S. Senator Rick Scott. He has a quote to start it out here. Americans deserve to know what we will do when given the chance to govern. Which honestly, like, actually I think that's a fairly good point because... A lot of people have said, well, the, the Republicans really don't have an agenda. Cool. So I guess they do have an agenda. So let's start. Number one, our kids will say the Pledge of Allegiance, salute the flag, learn that America is a great country, and, cho and choose the school that best fits them. <laughs> okay, so then he goes on, we will inspire patriotism and stop teaching the revisionist history of the radical left. Our kids will learn about the wisdom of the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Founding Fathers. Public schools will focus on the three R's, not indoctrination and critical race theory. So, you know, there's a lot here. It's basically like now, again, like I said with uh, Greg Abbott in Texas, it's basically like you're so afraid of critical race theory and sometimes the flawed teaching that does come from the left. And I, I have to say that that's true. But the problem is now you're going to basically limit any, any difference in speech here from happening. Um, I don't like the idea of that everyone has to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm a big free speech guy. I personally, when I'm at, when I'm at a sport game or a time when there's the Pledge of Allegiance happening, I, I will take off my hat and do it. But I also think a lot of people have the right to not do that. I am not going to require everyone to do it. Also, um, choose the school that best fits them. School choice means that public schools are just going to keep losing resources. It also isolates based on gender and race. Um, I think it leads to an even worse off society. Also critical race theory. Yeah, there's ghosts of it in schools, but to me this just sounds like weaponizing our schools. Okay, point number two. The government will never ask again why American citizens disclose their race, ethnicity, or skin color on any government forms. That's, you know, I'm, I'm actually okay with um, disclosing that, but it needs to be exhaustive and mutually exclusive. Number three. The soft on crime days of coddling criminal behavior will end. We will refund and respect the police because they, not the criminals, are the good guys. Loaded statement. <laughs> Very loaded statement. Um, not all police are the good guys. Believe me, they're not. Um, and I do think we have systematic issues with how we train our police that makes them sometimes more weaponized to specific communities. Um, at the same time, I do agree with... Uh, Refunding the police. I do agree with making a more efficient and better trained police force with a different work culture. Again, Biden wants to do that as well. Let's see. Moving on, number four. We will secure our border and finish building the wall and name it after President Trump. <laughs> wow. I didn't know the wall was that far along. You know, he says that, you know, President Trump's plan to build a wall was right. Nations have borders. I, I, I agree with that. Nations have borders. I don't think most Democrats or Republicans disagree on that, to be completely honest. 
Where I think we disagree is if a wall would fix it and if taxpayer money should go towards that. You know, they're criticizing the spending of Biden. They're criticizing any involvement in Ukraine. They're criticizing the stimulus. They're criticizing inflation, gas prices, taxes. But they want to build this wall that's not even close to being completed. And we also have drones, cybersecurity, so many better ways to enforce a border. So, yeah, I, I give that one a bad grade. Next, um, we will grow America's economy, starve Washington's economy, and stop socialism. Look, Nancy Pelosi is wealthy as hell. For someone who makes a couple hundred grand a year and is worth tens of millions, I'm fine if we starve out that wealth, but it's on both sides. Trump was also a grifter and clearly not honest about his money. So, you know, it goes both ways, my friend. Also, I've seen no evidence that socialism itself is actually in our economy or in our politics. Okay, number six. We will eliminate all federal programs that can be done locally and enact term limits for federal bureaucrats in Congress. There are certain programs that need to be federal because once you break programs down into block grants and kind of make states fight over how to use their funding, um, it doesn't always help the most vulnerable. Sometimes programs need to be federal. And um, I, I'm definitely a smaller government guy myself, but I acknowledge that there are certain programs that need to be federal. Also, uh, term limits I'm for. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of half on number six here. Number seven, we will protect the integrity of American democracy and stop left-wing efforts to rig elections. And the only people that are really trying to rig elections right now are the are the Republicans. Like, look, there's a conversation to be had about mail-in voting during the pandemic, how swift it was done, and how how encompassing it was. Okay, there's a conversation to be had there. So don't, don't take that too hard when I say that. But again, the people that are trying to change who actually certifies the ballots, changing how many people can vote, um, still are still a large percentage of their party actually thinks that Trump is the victorious guy in 2020. It's not Democrats who are trying to rig elections, Mr. Scott. It is the Republican Party, and Tucker Carlson and a lot of these people have even admitted how much they love what Viktor Orban is doing. Well, look in Hungary and look at what Viktor Orban's done in Hungary, and then ask why Fox News and Trump and all these Republicans are loving him so much. Moving on to eight, we, we will protect, defend, and promote the American family at all costs. Oh, God. He says in this, it is God's design for humanity. It must be protected and celebrated. Look, I'm an agnostic. I, I, I understand the values of religion. I'm not particularly religious myself. But I think when you talk about defending and promoting the American family, there's kind of a assumption that it means the traditional American family, man, woman, and that might be alienating to gay or trans people. And... I'm for more protecting Americans, no matter what their creed is, their belief, their gender. But when you talk about promoting the American family, to me, you're creating kind of a dichotomy. And I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly a fan of that. But there is room for debate over how he's defining the American family. But if you look further, he says, the fanatical left seeks to devalue and redefine the traditional family as they undermine parents and attempt to replace them with government programs. We will not allow socialism to place the needs of the state ahead of the family. Sorry, my AirPod fell out there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just not true. This is not true. You know, um, nah, I could do a whole episode on that. But I think you guys get my point is that this, this kind of loaded, coded rhetoric here I think is less about protecting families and more about defining what a family means. Anyways, number nine. Men are men, women are women, and unborn babies are babies. We believe in science. <sighs> this, one's, this one's toxic. I don't even want to touch this, to be completely honest, because I think Bill Maher said it best, is that there's a, there should be room in American society for a debate about these issues right now because it's affecting kids, it's affecting schools, and it's affecting all of us. But again, I'm very libertarian on these social issues. Um, I just think men are men, women are women, and unborn babies are babies is just too oversimplified. Um, I'm, I'm fairly pro-choice in abortion, but I like the culture of pro-life. I support the trans community and the gay community. 
Um, I sometimes question how far that should go for sporting events and other things like that. But again, this is just too too oversimplified, so I'm not going to really touch this one anymore. Also, number 10, Americans will be free to welcome God into all aspects of our lives. He says here, the Democratic Party and their big tech allies are not merely secular. They have virtually created a new religion of wokeness that is increasingly hostile towards people of faith, particularly Christians and Jews. They are determined to drive all mention of God out of public view. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, this one's tough because, like, I do actually think that secularism can be radicalized into almost a new religion of wokeness. I can, I can actually kind of understand the merits of that point. I've listened to a lot of good talks on this where as society becomes less religious and has less community, they look for new communities and people like to identify with the tribe. And I, I have seen examples throughout the world, especially in the United States, of how anti-racism and some of these rhetorical tools about talking about these issues have actually kind of mobilized groups into some sort of new belief system. Again, I don't know if the left is trying to get rid of Jesus from everything. I don't know if I buy that. But I think there is a conversation to be had about religion in schools. <sighs> yeah. And number 11, we are Americans, not globalists. Americans will be dependent on no other country. You know, I, I like that. He, he goes on, countries who oppose us at the UN will get zero financial help from us. Mm, yeah, I think that's okay. We'll be energy independent and build supply chains that never rely on our adversaries. We will only help countries that are willing to defend themselves, like Israel. That's a loaded one. I feel like there could be many points there. Like, I, I agree that we need to help countries. Like, okay, like the UN is a perfect example. Like, Gaddafi was the head of the Human Rights Council in the UN for a while. That should not be happening. We should not be even funding that at that point, especially when we know some of the atrocities he's doing. I think that's a fair point. At the same time, should we only work with countries that are willing to defend themselves? I think it gets difficult with something like NATO, where there's pretty much been a, a mutual agreement that we kind of provide the arms and the security, and they help us enforce stability. Like, it gets complicated. But yeah, um, you know, there's a lot more pages of this where he goes into some deeper thoughts on these 11 points, but I feel like the, the Republican Party is so radicalized around culture. And I don't disagree with everything Rick Scott's saying here. I don't. But it's oversimplified, and it's clearly just trying to radicalize people to believe that the left is dangerous. And that's kind of why I wanted to mention this. Uh, strange times. I don't think Rick Scott's good. I'd, <laughs> I don't really know who's good to vote for anymore, so we need something new. Anyways, I, uh, I'm glad we talked about something other than Ukraine today. Not to diminish what's happening in Ukraine, but as you guys know, there are other things happening. And yes, I think it's time to uh, start thinking about the midterms. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. Um, you know, I, I'm happy to say that my um, podcast numbers have been on the up. I thank you guys for spreading the word. Keep telling people. It's always nice to get good feedback from unknown people or friends alike. Keep shedding the word. Um, the YouTube numbers could be better, but I've, I've noticed on the audio platform, things are looking up. So again, I thank you guys. Again, you can find me on Apple iTunes, Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Podbean, all that fun, Centered from Reality Podcast, on Twitter, Alex Kapitko. Have a great night. Thanks.